it's Lori. The time is finally upon us. I am finally able to film the Spoonflower Fabrics video. This is going to be a review slash discussion on my personal experience ordering Spoonflower Fabrics for the last two years. I actually found Spoonflower quite some time ago when I was looking at a custom dress that I wanted to make for my daughter and I couldn't find the fabric for the specific character anywhere. Um, so googling it, um, it brought up a custom print fabric from Spoonflower and that was my first experience with them. The dress is now far too small for my daughter but we do still have it. Um, and then since then it's kind of unleashed a slightly over the top fabric uh, obsession with custom printing. I have printed my own fabrics, designed and printed my own fabrics uh, spoon through Spoonflower, and I've also purchased a lot of different designs and fabric styles um, from other artists uh, that design their fabrics and upload them to Spoonflower. So um, this video started out with the intention that I would purchase uh, seven different Spoonflower fabrics uh, during one of their sales in July. Um, they had a fat quarter, $5 fat quarter sale, so I purchased seven different styles of fabrics. I made those seven fabrics into pads and used them for the last few cycles to get an idea of how well uh, they would function as pad topper fabrics. Now I've also got a pile here of pads that I have previously made from Spoonflower Fabrics. Um, just to give you a comparison of what they look like after extended use. Um, these ones in this pile, uh, other than the second one, which is a Sherlock pad, um, and this, uh, this one at the bottom, the 80s print, um, these the other three are just about a year old. This is my very first Spoonflower pad. I made this one well over a year ago now and I've used it a number of times, although the style, the shape wasn't my favorite, so I haven't used it recently, um, but it did get used a number of times. And then here I've also got a pile of fabrics that have been only pre-washed once so that you could get a look at what um, what they look like initially and how they look after a number of uses. So I've got my notes ready here. Um, let's just start off with what I ordered. So in July, when I intended to make this video, I ordered, as I said, seven different fabrics. Um, I've had a number of people ask me for the names, the print names. Um, so we'll start with just the, you know, we'll go in order of the pile here. So this one is Silky Fail. The print is called Lemon Pattern, so not, not um, very unique, but I'm sure if you searched lemon, you'd be able to find it. It is a very soft, silky fabric, and this one has not faded at all um, over use. This next one is one that I got questioned about a couple of times and uh, the name isn't completely here but I remember what it's called. It's called All Those Bright and Shiny Companions and this fabric is the basic cotton ultra so the, the most inexpensive fabric that Spoonflower has. Um, it has faded tremendously. Um, actually, what we should probably do before I get too far into this is this is a comparison of a when the fabric's been washed once and when the fabric has been washed four times. As you can see, there's no difference at all whatsoever. Whereas this one has been washed four times, this is what Mind you, these are small pieces, so excuse the fact that these were just fat quarters. But let's get a good look at this. Okay. So this is the fabric washed four times, and this is the fabric washed once. This is even faded from when it first came in. If you watch the unboxing video, you'll see that the, the difference is there. But you, as you can probably tell, even like the brown has faded. 
the backing color. So that is the basic Cotton Ultra. After a number of uses, um, this next is um, the Performance Knit. The fabric name is Molly Mermaid, and it um, it has done very very well in terms of color fastness. Uh, and washability. Let's just see. I've only got a small piece of this because I've had um, my sister claim um, a fabric and then I made a pad out of it for my best friend for her birthday, which was a couple of days ago. So let's just have a look. So this is the fabric after being washed once. And this is what she looks like after being washed four times. So as you can see, there's absolutely no difference there, no fading whatsoever, and this is amazingly comfortable to wear, very much like Peak. So there's that one. And then speaking of Peak, this is the Peak Topper. It is called Performance Peak, and the design is called Bento Box. As you can see, it's looking very good. Um, where is the comparison? So this is what it looks like after one wash and what it looks like after four washes. Actually, you know what? These All of these pads may have been washed five times. I'm just thinking because I did have to run an extra wash this cycle because I had some staining, so I figured I'd wash them all again. So yeah, come to think of it, they've all been washed five times. So as you can see, they look completely identical. There's been no fading or wearing of the fabric whatsoever. And then the next one, this is the Minky. This name um, is called Halloween Spooky Moon. And I only have a small piece of this left as well because it was also claimed very quickly when it came in. <laughs> and as you can see, once again, they look completely identical. Maybe a tad bit of wear on the fibers on this one, but when they're all smoothed down, they look almost completely the same. So of course we know that, that Minky tends to wear very, very well and the color fastness of the Spoonflower Minky is amazing. There's so much detail for a Minky raised, you know, pile fabric. The definition um, and the depth to their Minky is absolutely fantastic. I couldn't be more pleased with that one. Uh, and then this next one is the Modern Jersey. And this one's called Cutie Moons. So if you watched the unboxing video when the fabric first came in, you'll notice that I um, see, had seen that this one faded immediately. You can see that the image from the website is very, very bright, while, whereas this one looks very muted. And if it was intended to be muted, I would have been okay with it. I would have still purchased this fabric because I think it still looks pretty in the muted tones but it was certainly supposed to be much brighter. So the printing process on the modern jersey, um, it's not very true to color and it this has continued to fade with washes. So I'll just show you a comparison. So this is it being washed once and this is it being washed uh, five times. So it's not faded tremendously, not nearly as bad as the basic Cotton Ultra, but it, it has faded. It might be hard to tell on camera, but it's it it has faded slightly. Um, and this also faded with the first wash as well. And then the last fabric from this specific order is the one I'm probably the most bummed about. I had high hopes for this. This is the fleece. The pattern um, is called sanitary napkin pattern. And as you can see, it's obvious why, another super creative name. Um, this one is fleece, as I had just said, I believe. And 
as you can see, I actually didn't even wear this on my last cycle. I don't know if that was unconscious or just because I have a issue with prints that get really pilly, but this fabric has just pilled. This one's only been washed three times and it's shot. The fabric is super fuzzy. It feels okay. You can feel the pills though. It's not nearly as smooth. And as a comparison, so this is after three washes and this is after one. So you can see this was super silky and soft and it was very, very low pile. There was no pilling, no fibers, no raised fibers compared to this. So it's both faded and it's pilled very, very badly. So I'm going to have to say that I would not recommend the fleece as a fabric topper, even though I love fleece as a fabric topper. And I was so hoping that I could get the awesome, you know, prints in a fleece fabric to make myself a bunch of winter pads, but I just can't. If you don't mind pilling, I suppose, but really this is only three washes. I have no idea how it would wear for continual use. I, like around the sides, the fibers are all coming loose. You can see like little holes in the fabric. So yeah, really can't recommend this one, even though when it first came in, I was so excited because it looked really good, but nope. All right, so that is the pile of fabrics that I ordered in July. Now here are a few other Spoonflower pads. I don't still have my invoices for these guys, but I figured I would show them to you. Uh, this is the basic Cotton Ultra as well in a slightly different print, it's a little bit lighter. And as you can see, it hasn't faded nearly as much. The purple's not quite as bright and has, the green has faded a bit, but it's not nearly as noticeable as this darker print in the Doctor Who Companions. So there is some difference depending on the actual print you're choosing. There may be instances where it may not be that big of a deal, um, but then again, it really, it seems to really depend because I'll show you this one as well. These are all the basic cotton ultra. So this one seemed to fare okay. They all feel the same. It's a soft cotton. This one seems to fare okay. This one's very, very faded, and this one is very faded. Let me show you how much this 80s fabric has faded. Here is after it's been washed once, and here it is after it's been washed probably five or six times. So it may not look that faded on camera, but let me assure you, it's like 50% faded at least in real life. Like this is very, very, let's see if I can get it to focus. This is very, very faded compared to this. So there's your close up. So I love this fabric. So I continue to wear this pad. Um, it's just that it does certainly fade quite a bit. In terms of sewing with it um, and durability, it's not fraying, there's no pilling, it was very easy to sew with like all cottons are, but the fading, I don't know, you'll have to decide whether or not that's something that you can deal with. Um, and then for this guy, I think I have the bolt for this as well. So. As you can see, well, this doesn't really look all that faded when you're looking at it. Looking at it up against the original. So here is the original. Is this even focusing? Kind of. So there's the original. And there's the pad after a number of uses. So it, it might be hard to tell in the video. Let me see but it has, this has faded as well. It's just less apparent because there's less, you know, um, it's not as bright of a fabric to start with and it's a little bit more muted tones, but it, it has faded. Um, we already looked at that guy. And then the retired cotton poplin. So 
This fabric um, in the image on the website is a very, very dark gray, if not black. And when it came in, it was a little bit darker. This is the, the original fabric after being washed once. And you can see that this is also faded. Not nearly as bad as the basic cotton, but this is the, again, this is cotton, the retired cotton poplin. I actually received an email from Spoonflower, I believe it was last week or the week before, saying that this is going to be retired permanently, um, I believe at the end of September. So it may already be that you can no longer purchase this fabric, but, so this is, this is what it did look like. I actually, when they released their new cotton poplin, I got samples of it. So these are just test swatches. I got them in a number of colorways because I wanted to see if it would be preferable over this. Um, uh, so there's a number of dark prints and some lighter prints and a print with lots of blue. And I'll show you. Um, I don't know which is better because as you can see this was supposed to be dark and it was supposed to be much darker than it actually turned out to be. Well, this one, I think the color was going on the printer a bit when this was printed, but this is supposed to be a dark gray with black lunas from Sailor Moon and yellow moons. Well, let me just show you how it looked when it came in to me. This is what it ended up coming in as. So as you can see, it is true black. It is very black. Problem is, the backer was supposed to be dark gray, not black. And all you've got are Luna's little confused eyes all over the fabric. So you can't even see where she, her body is whatsoever. So whereas this one was a little bit undersaturated, it's not nearly as dark as what the images appear to be. This one is way oversaturated. And again, this is the Cotton Poplin Ultra. This is the current Cotton Poplin Ultra that they are selling on Spoonflower right now. So I don't know if that, obviously neither one of them is fantastic, um, but you can't even see the print in this case. So I'd have to say, I'd rather have them faded and still able to see the print than, you know, have them be so oversaturated that you can't even see the print. With that being said, the colors, when they're not intended to be very dark, are very true. Um, this is a very colorful, print with the blue backer and as you can see it's very colorful. I'm not sure if the quality of this um, upload was very good though because the characters are quite fuzzy and I think that might have been just the quality of the image that the fabric designer uploaded to the site might not have been very high resolution because it's not so apparent on this one. So this is a lighter pink fabric um, and the color definition is there. So again, this is, these are all Cotton Poplin Ultra, what is currently being sold on site. It's a very, I have to say, it's more dense and much rougher feeling than cotton. Okay. Um, so, and then there's another lighter color one with, you know, the colors are quite saturated on it, which is good. I don't know how these are going to wash because, well, I haven't washed them. They're just fabric swatches. And then I got another dark print, um, but in colors. And this one did a lot better. Again, I think the ink was running out here, so this was supposed to be darker. These lines in it are from the printer itself. Um, but this, you know, seems to be pretty true. So that is the Cotton Poplin Ultra that has replaced this retired Cotton Poplin. All right, now here's another pad that I absolutely love. Um, this is the Minky Pickles pad. I actually just got um, a comment on one of my other videos from Nikki over at the Green Option letting me know that this now comes in small scale and you get a couple of the pickle jars per pad, which I think is awesome. I do like the big scale as well. I like these big giant pickles, um, but it, 
you know, when you're working with a smaller item and you have a large scale print, it can be very challenging to get decent print options. Um, and it also wastes fabric because you need to kind of position, um, position your cuts in very specific spots to get um, to get a decent option. And both uh, Pad Thai and myself uh, had ordered prints in this fabric from a maker. And, you know, the print placement was not optimal, which is um, why I ended up ordering some because I was really in love with the print and really wanted to have the control to be able to pick uh, the print placement. But as you can see, this one has been worn many, many, many times. It's about a year old as well. And it still looks fantastic. This has only been washed once and this one's been washed. I can't even tell you how many times and it still looks great. So again, thumbs up for the Minky. It is very easy to sew with. The one thing you have to know about Minky, because it's a pile, there are fibers on top of the, on top of the um, cloth. When you sew against the grain, you are going to see white separating underneath. Under here, the, the print, the coloring, the dye that they use to add the prints to the fabric is on top of the fibers. So when you separate them and look underneath, there is white. Um, now that doesn't bother me and I don't really think it should bother you because that's just the nature of minky fabric. But if you're somebody who's very particular or, or you just can't deal with the look of, of you know, the fiber separating a little bit, um, it may not be for you. But overall, I really love minky. You can't go wrong in terms of its wearability and its washability. And that's big for me. And then... Um, I don't know why I grabbed this. This is another spoon flower print um, that I'm intending to make a pad out of. This was purchased, oh God, probably two or three years ago and I made a wallet and oh, probably even more than that, maybe four years ago. I don't even know if they sell this fabric anymore, but I made myself a wallet out of it and I made my husband um, a cover for his, well, at the time it was an ebook reader. Now he's got a, ta a tablet. Uh, that he puts on the cover. And then this fabric, I didn't get the the large um, remaining piece of it, but this is also Peak. This was my first experience ordering Peak from Spoonflower. I've also worn this pad a number of times um, and it's also worn very well. And it, there doesn't seem to be anything changed because I think that's why I pulled some of these out is I wanted to see if there's been any changes in the fabric types. Like, oops, I just shifted everything. Okay, like this Minky and this Minky, even though this Minky was ordered more than a year ago and this one was recently ordered, they're still, they're still very much the same. Sorry, interruptions. Okay, let's see here. So I've got this giant pile. <laughs> But I also have a few notes. I think I've covered everything, but um, just have a look to make sure. Oh, the one thing I didn't talk about, I did discuss comfort and fabric quality, um, whether or not I would buy them again. Um, but just to also discuss sewing ease, um, I have a brother one of the um, fashion designer uh, project runway machines. It was about $700, so not overly expensive for a sewing machine. Um, it's more lightweight. And I also have a Genome that's more of my workhorse. It's an all metal sewing machine, it's very heavy. Neither um, one of them uh, had trouble with the majority of the fabrics, but I do wanna mention my brother really did not like this fleece fabric. I had a lot of skip stitches when I was sewing with it. I think it's just the weave of it, the, the feel, the denseness of it. Um, I tried sewing it with both a standard needle um, as well as a ballpoint needle um, with my walking foot, without my walking foot, it, my machine just really, the brother just really, really did not like this. Um, the Genome, 
uh, was a little bit better with it, but also there were some skip stitches with it. Um, I also tend to have that tr that issue with my brother and some of the WinPro fabrics. I think it's just the texture, like the squishiness and the denseness of the fabric that seems to give it trouble. Um, let's see here. And then in terms of the other toppers, they were all pretty easy to sew with. Um, the peak and the modern jersey are slippery fabrics. So there's they can be a little bit more challenging. I did actually have, sorry, a couple of skip stitches on the top stitching of the mermaid pad. I'm not quite sure where that has gone to just now, but I think that's also because of the slipperiness of the fabric. Um, different sewing machines are gonna be different. Um, but overall, they all had really uh, nice results for sewing with. Um, I'm just looking over my notes and it looks like that is it. So wh which ones would I purchase again and which ones would I not purchase again? Uh, I think I've said that intermittent talks about it intermittently throughout the video, but we'll just recap. I don't think I would purchase the fleece again. It, the, um, it felt really nice when it first came in, but it just pills and fades too badly uh, for my personal preferences. If that's not something that bothers you, it, it does feel nice. It did absorb and wick well when being worn. I didn't feel wet when I was wearing it, but I now can feel the feel the pill uh, blah, blah 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 the pilling when I'm wearing it. So um, that is a kind of a sensory issue that I have with it at this point. The Performance Peak, of course, I would purchase this again and I intend um, in my next order to purchase more of this fabric. Uh, not this specific print, but I will, I'm going to have a few things printed on Peak uh, for use with cloth pads. The Modern Jersey, um, I would purchase it again depending on the print. Um, this this turned out not bad. It still looks really nice um, as a more muted tone, but just keep in mind if you do decide to purchase it, um, it is a knit. It does feel very much like your standard t-shirt knit fabric. Um, it does have stretch both directions, um, but in terms of washability and fading, uh, that kind of bothers me. So not sure, 100% on this one, although I do really like this pad. So that's a maybe, I guess. The Minky, of course, I'll be purchasing more of this as well, especially now that the colder months are here. I tend to wear Minky in the fall, winter, and spring, not so much in the summer because I do find it a bit warm. Uh, and that's Minky across the board, not just Spoonflower Minky, it's any Minky. Um, color Fastness, this just did fade a slight, slight bit maybe I'm maybe a little but overall it is very nice to work with um, and I do intend to purchase more of it now the performance knit this one as I was saying is slightly more expensive than peak and honestly I cannot really tell the difference I suppose the brightness is a, it's a little bit brighter in the performance knit. Uh, it does not fade as well. Um, to really be able to tell, you'd probably have to purchase the same print in both fabrics, but I would guess that there wouldn't be much difference uh, whatsoever. I don't think it's worth the added price of the performance knit um, over the peak. This one I think is a couple, a full couple dollars less expensive than this one is. Grr, so now my neighbor has decided to start up his lawnmower. So let's get through the rest of this quickly. I'm sorry if you hear that. Um, so I don't think that the price um, increase for the performance knit would make it a better option. I'd probably stick with the Peak. Uh, the basic Colton Ultra, as you can see, fades quite a lot. Um, I don't know that I will be purchasing it for use in pads. It may be suitable for other purposes, probably for making 
wallets or purses, something that you're not going to be washing frequently. Um, but overall, uh, it is comfortable. It, it is just as comfortable as any standard cotton. It just doesn't retain color um, quite as well. The washability, the durability um, of it, it doesn't pill and the fabric, you know, it, it holds its, its shape, but um, the fading tends to really irk me. And then lastly, the Silky Fail. I have no idea where that one is. I'm not gonna dig through this pile. Oh, I lied. I did dig through and I found it. Um, this one is fantastic. I'm surprised. I was expecting really not to like this. It is a more slippery fabric. I found it breathable. Um, not quite as breathable as like say a cotton, but it would really depend on you. Everyone seems to have their own preferences. Um, but I, I think I would purchase this again. I, I liked it. Um, probably not in large quantities. I, I do prefer the uh, peak. I'd say the, the peak and the minky were my two favorites. Um, the other ones are a handful of maybes with the exception of the fleece. I don't think I'd I'd venture into that again. So that's it. I think I've covered everything. I've given you a look at the new cotton poplin. Um, again, this fabric is not stretchy. This is a cotton. Like think of a flat, a flat cotton or a quilter's weight cotton. It's like that. It's up. It's not as soft. It's a little bit rougher. Rougher and silkier at the same time. I don't quite understand. Um, it's a unique feeling fabric. You would have to um, pick some up uh, to see what you thought of it. Personally, I prefer cotton, but then again, it doesn't wear super well with spoon flowers. So my recommendations would be to stick with the Peak or the Minky. You can try the Silky Fail. I really liked it. Um, the Knit the modern jersey knit fabric does fade, but it is also very, very comfortable in terms of wearing. Uh, so if you're okay with slight fading, that you might want to go with that as well. But I would stay away from the fleece and possibly the basic cotton. Um, it's odd because I do, like I said, this one did not fade as much as this one did. So it might also be the print that you're choosing in it. I would stick away from really dark colors. Um, or colors with a lot of depth to them. If you're sticking with a more simple pattern um, and some simple coloring, you might be all right. But for me in the future, I think I'll be sticking with the peak and the minky. So thanks so much for watching, ladies. If you have any questions, and I'm sure there may be some, uh, please feel free to leave them down below. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. I am not on YouTube every day, but I do try to get uh, back to people um, as soon as I can. And I thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.